Hello everyone and welcome to the commentary version of Raise Aerospace Simulating a Space Future 6. In this video we begin with the Kasei rocket in its flight configuration, its first stage recoverable configuration with three boosters on top, and it is carrying an in-situ resource utilization unit for the moon. This is a lander that will drill for ore and convert that ore into hydrogen and oxygen. Ore is the resource that Kerbal Space Program has by default that we can mine for, though in this particular install I also have USI, Umbra Space Industries, and that mod also adds other resources, and KSP Interstellar is also in here adding other resources that we can mine for as well. So there's a lot of things that we can get from the various planets, and that's going to be essential for our series here, because we want to make bases, and I've got extra planetary launch pads, which I hope to finally actually use. So it's a whole complicated deal, but the first thing is still always ore. And we have on the ISR unit a converter that converts the ore into liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, and those are the propellants that we use for the lander, the Kumo lunar lander, among other things. Ultimately, we would like a nuclear thing that can just take the hydrogen and also then boost over to other planets because hydrogen in, with a nuclear engine is much more efficient and it'll be nicer to get off the moon than launching it from Earth, but that's further ahead. We do have KSB Interstellar though, so further ahead is possible. So here it is making orbit and the same stage, the upper stage of the Kasei rocket boosts it over to the moon, so there's translunar injection. The fun thing about the recoverable version of the first stage of the Kasei rocket is of course the huge fairing that sort of separates and then retracts backward and then closes up again in order to become the nose of the recoverable section. Uh, that was an uh, interesting animation to make and unique I believe because probably it'd be very heavy. So on, on the bright side we aren't carrying anything too heavy in this case. And the lander does most of the work around the moon. It separates from the stage after translunar injection. The stage still has plenty of delta V in it. And this just captures into orbit. And of course, it's using hydrogen and oxygen. These are BE-7 engines. These are the ones that are going to be used by Blue Origin on their lander. Uh, I don't have the exact numbers. I've made them approximate numbers. Uh, they're reasonably good Hydrolox engines with 30 kilonewtons. And here's the lunar landing burn. The first time that I tried this, I put on more powerful engines and the script could not handle that. Uh, I put RL-10 class engines, so we're talking about 100 kilonewtons, and then it only had a burn time of 2 minutes, and if it has a burn time of 2 minutes, the KOS script does not like it. And frankly, it shouldn't, because with that kind of burn time, it really can't throttle down enough to land at all safely anyway, like these engines are throttling down to land. You have to have it so that the engines can get below lunar gravity and thrust in order for them to land. So otherwise, if as long as they're lit, they'll start going up again too easily. So we lost one because of the slope. Um, it was uh, three kilometers off, I think, or two to three kilometers off. It seems to always be two to three kilometers off from where I wanted. And the intended location was at the bottom of the crater, which was flat, of course. But yeah, if it's got to be persistently landing on the slopes around that, we might want a bigger crater to land in. Anyway, but that worked, and it was drilling, and it was uh, producing hydrogen and oxygen safely. And so here we are launching the port truss of Newport Depot. Right now we have the solar array off to one side where actually other modules need to go. Uh, but in order for it to be positioned properly, we need the rest of the truss so that we can mount that segment on top of that truss. So there are three, seg uh, three segments to the truss that we're going to have to assemble and then we can move that solar truss over. Uh, because the solar rays are just huge, and Starship has only so much volume, so we needed to cut it apart. If we had a longer sort of volume in order to fit the trusses into, we could have used that. Um, or we could have some sort of... An well, we can't have an animation with a folding truss, because I don't know how to get the nodes to go along with the animation. I don't know how Infernal Robotics does that, so... Uh, that would be complicated. So better ju to just assemble it with the little... Space tugs, our Canada tugs. So launching out of Tampico as usual with Starship. And again, uh, Pekka has modified this Starship 
to suit the Flight 4 characteristics of Starship, so it doesn't have the prescribed payload capacity. Um, and now they're adding a blader to the thing, and they've increased the strength of the tiles. So I don't know what that does to the payload capacity, but it probably makes it worse, right? Uh, so I don't want to see that. Um, we're going to have to do something drastic to Starship so that I can use it while still retaining its correctness, I guess. I feel like there are people who are not going to like what I'm going to do to Starship because there are Starship purists out there that think it is a gift from God or something, but I'm going to chop it up. Uh, basically, I'm thinking of putting four Raptor vacuums at the bottom end with the center one gimbling so that we get maximum efficiency, and then we just dump all of that, the, dump the tank and those four. They're making the Raptors really cheaply anyway, so I mean, if they're really like a million dollars a pop, I don't mind dumping them. Uh, just the back end of the tank, it's probably cheaper to dump them than to actually do all the tiling, frankly. Uh, especially with the ablator now, for the rest of that tank. And all we need is the front end, because the front end, uh, all we need is enough to land on Mars. With the 100 tons of whatever payload you want, or whatever we can actually carry. And to land on Mars, as long as you have some parachutes on it, you can have like maybe 500 meters per second. You don't need that much Delta V to land on Mars, as long as you're just gonna leave that stuff there. So that'd be for cargo. For crew and all, I have the mini Q or the Miku. So that can land and then take off again. I've already demonstrated that. So modifications to Starship may be incoming, just so that I get what I need out of it. I'll ponder the math of that for, that's just for Mars. That wouldn't work for the moon or anything. Uh, but for the moon, we have other things to use. I am not a believer in monopolies. Anyway, here we have the first truss segment that goes on one side of module LP1. <laughs> barely, barely fitting in there as you can see. Uh, it is a tight fit. And then of course we have to have two tugs in order to dock it properly to the station. You'll have to forgive me for this particular piece of music, I wrote it rather quickly and it's meant to be just background game music for uh, hopefully some game I write someday. but. Anyway, for now, here it is. Hey, at least it's not AI created, right? I mean, these days, you can just be thankful that it's not AI generated. <laughs> All right, here we go. My goal is basically to get my music to Kevin MacLeod level, you know, the original music of Kerbal Space Program. Uh, if, if I can sort of match that vibe, I'm in good shape, I feel like. All right, here we go, getting another piece of the truss. The docking ports for these truss segments were actually made by Pekka because Pekka wanted those little ports to be compatible with his Starship. And so they're meant to be basically Starship's little uh, umbilical port. So those end up being our fuel transfer ports, linking all these together. I did make the truss. Pekka, of course, had made the Starship, the modules on the station, the habitable modules are from NASA's model of the ISS, and I just adapted it. Not an easy thing to do, by the way. I don't think they meant that model be, to be taken apart module by module, and it had quite a lot of polygons, and a lot of those were actually connecting the modules. They had little wires going from one to the other. Uh, it was a bit of a mess, but I managed, at least for these modules, though I haven't done all of the station. Honestly, this whole assembly thing is just to get all the nice views of Earth. Uh, it's nice to assemble stuff like this with Earth in the background. It's just sort of neat. So it's enjoyable from an artistic perspective to do all this. And that's why I'm doing it par primarily. I mean, of course, I like the idea of having an Earth orbit station, but assembling a station in Earth orbit is just such a picturesque sort of thing to do. And so here we go. Our two little tugs go over there. You can see the long truss that this has to be attached to. I don't know what NASA would think of this. Probably nothing really good, but uh, hey, uh, this, is, this is how it was designed. I, I discussed this particular orientation for this depot in a video, so you can see the full plan. Uh, there's a video on it uh, for the fuel depot, and that is what I'm trying to assemble here. It is according to that plan. 
One nice thing about A using the tugs and B me making my own parts for this is it's relatively few parts so we can make the station fairly large without having a big part count. And the tugs, instead of having RCS on all the modules and the controller on all the modules and all that stuff, uh, we have the RCS on the little tugs. That's the only way this can be controlled right now. Ultimately we'll have some control on it. but. With the tugs being the control, we save a lot on RCS ports and stuff like that. And we, of course we have a huge solar array instead of a whole bunch of smaller solar arrays. So we can make the station pretty large like this without having to increase our part count. And so I, that's going to be an attractive thing and hopefully I can make it really huge even beyond the initial plan. Anyway, so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.